So why do I think the work of Esther is important in my community? For me right now, it's the best way of putting into practice the social justice teachings of the church. We decide what will benefit uh, dignity and the wholesome living in our communities. And being an interfaith group, we honor each other's beliefs. In other words, how God has revealed God's self in other traditions and other cultures. And we strategize and work together to peacefully bring about systemic changes, which will promote the dignity of, and life of our communities. So for me, it's becoming a part of the, of the larger beloved community as we work together from our differing traditions and get to know each other, learn from each other, and bring about peace. After, as uh, Pope Paul VI said, if you want peace, work for justice. So what I'll do is pick up with Catholic social teachings. There's seven of them. And the, uh, it's to respect human dignity, life and human dignity. Uh, and that's very encompassing. In fact, our bishops a while back came out making a statement that the death penalty should be abolished. I mean, that's one area of human dignity, you know, life. And you'll notice that these um, social justice teachings revolve around the concept of human dignity. Okay, so however you want to interpret that human dignity. And it, for me, it's the run of the gamut, all the way to the end, till the Lord calls me home, okay, or whatever that is. So. And then the next one is call to family, community, and participation. We are not only spiritual people, but we are also social people. So we are called to be members of family and of uh, communities. Esther is a community to me. My religious community is a community to me. My family is a community to me. A member at St. Raphael's Parish is a community to me. And so... I'm called to participate in all of those communities in whatever way I best, best possibly can. And that brings life to the community, whichever community I'm relating to at that point in time. Also, the next one is rights and responsibilities. Not only do we have, um, not only are we religious, but we're also social. So, and in that social concept, we have rights and responsibilities. We have rights to be respected for who we are as a person, but then I also have responsibilities to those rights. So that's kind of what that's about. And then uh, a big one that you might hear from the pulpit occasionally in a Catholic church, but you don't hear a lot of these others, and that's preference, preferential treatment for the poor. And that's, and, and for me, it's pulling apart charity and justice. There's a difference between the two. We're great with charity. Most people are pretty good with charity. Bill, you shared earlier about how people were going around, or is that you, Gary, going around and snow blowing for everyone else in the neighborhood? Yeah, it's a charitable act to help someone out. But the big difference is justice brings about systemic change. Charity, if, if that's all we do, that's where we will be. And to move beyond that, to bring about systemic change, we need to get into justice issues. And that's what brings about systemic change. The dignity of the work and the rights of workers is another one. And this one, I was raised in a union family. My father was an arbitrator and negotiator for unions in the state of Wisconsin. And we ate, slept, and drank unions as a kid, mm -hmm. you know. So I was really upset with our bishops in Wisconsin when our governor was taking away union rights from our teachers in our public schools. But I didn't hear anyone complaining or barfing about that other than we in the grassroots, you know. But as some of our leaders need to, to get out front, too. So when all this was happening with immigration in our country, I was at a meeting with Bishop Rickon, 
and I, I asked him right out, I said, so will there be a statement from you as bishop of our diocese with regard to all that's going on with immigration right now? And he said yes, and shortly after it came out. So that's part of the justice for me, is to challenge, to make sure it's happening, at least how I see it. So workers have a right to a decent workplace, they have a right a right to an honest wage and they have a right to organize and form unions and be members of unions. That's what our Catholic social teaching says about this. Uh, another one is solidarity and we are uh, we are in we are one big family, the human race and and to be in solidarity, we're in solidarity regardless of color, regardless of religion, regardless of, it's, it's a diverse group. So to be in solidarity with all of that, we need to work together. And then care for God's creation, which is really screaming at us right now. <laughs> we're going off the cliff, Bill. <laughs> so we're called to also be responsible for that. So it, it, uh, it's kind of discouraging when some of our, our um, organizations are not, for example, recycling. You know, when you're gathered for different things and there's no recycling going on. And that's, that sounds like a minor thing, but it's a pretty important piece. So those are the Catholic social teachings. Mm -hmm. And we used to say a number of years back, they're the best kept secret in the Catholic Church. And not so much anymore. Uh, Mary Jo and I at St. Raphael's, they brought in the guy who is uh, in social justice in the diocese. And his Monday night, uh, it was canceled. But this past Monday, that's why we weren't at TIP, uh, he came and gave that presentation. And so at our parish, they're constantly trying to, our Human Concerns Commission is trying to get the word out. What are the Catholic social teachings? How are we doing with them? Is it just from a charity standpoint? Or are we going deeper than that? Mm -hmm. And my belief is to go deeper, you have to be involved politically. That's my own personal belief because it's the, it's the. Through change uh, happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's the policies and the laws and mm -hmm. all of that that take place. And unless that changes, and it's the lawmakers that control that. We don't control that, they do. So that's why it's important to get to Madison Day. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I just got your application today, so yeah. thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the second question was? Uh, how, what do you think of the Merkup Esther is important in my community? Or why do I think Merkup Esther is important in my community? Well, I think the biggest reason I've kind of already said, because it's only through systemic change, mm -hmm. and that's what Esther is about, to bring about systemic change. Otherwise, it'll be charity. And not that that's not important, but systemic change is the big issue from my perspective. Um, I belong to the um, Ecumenical Catholic Communion at Emmaus, and we're not Roman Catholic, although the majority of us have come from the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church. We are actually a branch of the Old Catholic that separated from Rome in the 1800s over papal infallibility and jurisdiction. So we honor the Pope, but he's not our boss. Yeah. Um, and in our community, um, laity and, higher, and, the, and the clergy are equal. Uh, and we, we vote in our, our pastors and, and our bishops. So we have a, a little bit different um, makeup that way, a little bit different character. But like our Roman Catholic um, brothers and sisters, we retain that Catholic identity in social teachings. Um, Thomas Merton, oh, yeah. Dorothy Day, Father Daniel Berrigan, I mean mm -hmm. heroes uh, for social justice. And so that's a big, that's a big part of the, the ecumenical Catholic communion. And even in our constitution, our preamble, it states, we are men and women baptized in Christ. We are laity and ordained. We join together the messianic call of the spirit to form household of faith to preach the gospel of liberation and justice for the poor, for the outcast, for the sick, for the disabled, 
the old, the young, the imprisoned, to offer refuge in Christ to those who suffer prejudice because of race, color, culture, philosophy, gender, sexual orientation, or educational deprivation, and to conform our lives to the life and teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ through prayer, study, service, and the celebration of the liturgy and the sacraments. And that's what drew me to this faith community, is those were the things I was hungry for. Um, loved where I was before, but I didn't think I was going to live long enough to see the changes I wanted. Uh, so I feel very comfortable in um, with the ECC personally because they're trying to walk the talk. And I have been welcomed and I'm on the road for ordination. And I really see that that welcoming and inclusiveness. And I think that's a reflection of what we're called to in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So that was important to, to, to me personally. And what Esther does is, before I moved to Wisconsin, I was part of uh, Faith in the Valley, I sat on the board, and it was uh, inclusive in, in other faith traditions, getting to know each other and working towards social change. And in central, the great Central Valley of California, a lot of that had to do with the immigration issue, okay. migrant farm worker rights. Um, so when I came to Wisconsin, I was looking for something that would fill this call to the gospel. To, mm -hmm. And uh, Father Mike suggested Esther, and um, I think it's a tool, a wonderful tool to help educate our community. Um, and, and in our my local faith community, some of the challenges is that it's over 93% white. So what surprised me moving here was there wasn't this yeah. diversity that I was uh, used to, mm -hmm. uh, that I had grown up with in Southern California, where I heard lots of languages and yeah. lots of skin color and traditions, is kind of a little bubble. And it was, in a way, not to be negative, but it was kind of like going back in time a little bit. Um, and so Esther has, has provided me um, an education in learning about this community and some of the challenges it has. Uh, and, and bringing that to my faith community and helping to wake them up <laughs> a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so it's, and, it, and, and Esther is community also, mm -hmm. and wonderful, wonderful people. So I feel supported in my faith community, and then I feel supported in the Esther community. And I, and I think they, they work well together.